One of the most frequent Excel questions I hear is some variation of, is there a way to add the same header and footer or page layout to more than one worksheet at the same time? The answer is yes, and it's easy, but the steps are not intuitive and not even covered in most Excel books or websites. The solution is to group worksheets by selecting multiple sheets in a workbook. Hi, I'm Don Bjork, the Software Pro. I'm also a Microsoft Certified Trainer and Certified Excel Expert. Let's look at the grouping features in Microsoft Excel. You can use grouping to print a selection of sheets at the same time, to enter or edit data on several worksheets at once. Grouping is great to apply formatting, such as page setup options, to a selection of worksheets all at the same time. There's no need to repeat the same steps over and over again. And you can also use grouping to move, copy, or delete a selection of worksheets. So first, how do we group worksheets? One option is to click on the first sheet of what will be the group. Then hold down the Shift key and select the last of that group. In doing so, you'll see that they are all highlighted or activated. Another way for you to confirm this is to look up into the title bar. Here you will see the word group next to the workbook name. In earlier versions of Excel, group may display in square brackets. More recent versions will display as shown. Once you have worksheets grouped, then you can apply the same actions to each of those. Let's look at some other techniques for grouping. First of all, how do we ungroup? One way is to simply click on a worksheet that's not part of that group and they will all be unselected. What's another technique? Well, you may not want to select a contiguous or touching group of sheets. For this, we click on one of the sheets and hold Control. Now you can select as many sheets as you want, even if they are not touching or right next to each other. Once again, group will display in the title bar. So this is something that we don't want to do right before we have a meeting to go to or at the end of the day because when a workbook is grouped that becomes saved and if we forget about that we could get ourselves into trouble. This can be a really helpful and time-saving feature but you need to be working with it from beginning to end. Once again, I'll unselect. Now another way to do that is to right click on any one of these sheet tabs and choose ungroup sheets. So now I have a set of worksheets that I would like to apply changes to. Now in this particular example, each of these sheets has a similar layout that is the same kind of content is at the top or in these column labels. So that's another factor when you are editing data, entering data, and applying formatting, is you want to be conscious and aware of whether or not some of these actions would even make sense. Just for demonstration purposes here, I will go ahead and change the background fill here. And let's say that I want to change this label. Now because of the display here, I'll also select the entire row and apply wrap text. And maybe we also want to change the height of that row. And even the column width. Because they're grouped, understand that you are making these changes to every single one of these grouped or selected worksheets. And now let's look at the layout. So for instance, under page layout, our orientation is currently portrait and we'll modify this to be landscape. We could further go in and change margins and apply other modifications to it. Let's go back to that question about header and footer. With these sheets selected, we'll choose insert, header and footer. Now in this case, Excel will switch to the page layout view. If any of the worksheets has freeze panes enabled, you'll be prompted to turn off this feature and may end up working with the header and footer through the page layout dialog box. Here I'll add a header. Now 
This can be formatted just as you would if it was an individual worksheet that you were applying a header or footer to. And we'll move out of this view. Now I'll change back to the normal view, which is under the view tab and normal. Now that I've completed these actions, what I want to do is to make sure that I no longer have these sheets grouped. We saw that there's several ways that we could change this. I'll come back down to the worksheet tab and right click. And here I can pick ungroup sheets, but I also want you to see too, that if it makes sense for your particular workbook, you could select all the sheets from this option rather than just individual ones. So we'll ungroup and confirm that we no longer see group in our title bar. Let's see how successful we were with these changes. To view my results, I'll move into print preview. But before I do that, I'm going to once again select a set of worksheets and group them. So either file print, or in this case, control P, and we can see the formatting here and we have our heading as well. Using my navigation in the preview, we can then move through this. So there are a couple quick things here. One is, in our printing, we have print active sheets. Now, this is typically going to be an individual sheet, but with grouping, then we can make print active sheets refer to whatever happens to be grouped. So that could be a set of two or three different worksheets. With them grouped, I noticed that one of the things I didn't catch in the layout is that this worksheet data is going between two different pages. So I'm going to change the margins and make them narrow. Now that should fix it for me. And sure enough, now I have more success here where I'm able to fit all of the data within worksheet. So you can apply the available options that you see here and it will change what is grouped. Notice then, as we go through here, each one of these has that formatting, change the content, and that header change. If we look at one of the other worksheets that wasn't part of the group, you can see that we can be very specific about how we want to use the grouping feature to apply formatting and editing changes to our worksheets. Before you move on to your next Excel action, make sure to check that workbook title bar to verify your worksheets are no longer grouped, and then you can continue working with each worksheet individually. How will you apply these grouping features to save time and effort in Excel? For more tips on being productive with Excel, head to thesoftwarepro.com slash Excel. If this online training was helpful, please like and comment on this video and subscribe to this channel. This is Don Bjork, the Software Pro. Thanks for watching.